Hey, welcome to the A1 with Moi. I am so excited to be back on the YouTube streets. It's been a hot minute. Took a break in 2019 and then 2020 happened. And even though I kind of came back to like do a live because everybody was doing a live, uh, I'm really excited to really be back right now with a new vision of the A1. And if you want to know what that is, check out our channel trailer. But today I am interviewing Lesejo Flabby. You might know her as Coconut Kells, her satire character and I'm really excited because I've been doing interviews with celebrities and amazing influential people for some time but I wanted to mix it up so today we are learning how to shoot a gun for the very first time my first time and I believe it's the Seco's first time as well so this should be interesting but if you're new right here on the channel make sure you do the things like subscribe comment and you know share this video as well I really hope you enjoy what we're about to do it's going to be interesting and I have a little something for you right at the end so make sure you stick all the way to the end and make sure you subscribe all right let's go How are you? Yeah, are we allowed to hug in the pandemic? I hopefully <laughs> we'll see. How are you feeling? Um, I'm I'm feeling excited and nervous at the same time, but I was actually I'm kind of weirded out about where we are. I know. Just because I was like started driving, I was on my phone, all of a sudden we're in the middle of like I don't even know what to call this area. It just looked a bit murdery to me. So I was like, okay, I'm definitely being set up by Moyen. It does look like somebody could get murdered here. It does. Plus so. you have to get dropped off. I don't know if you guys can see it, but like way at the bottom and yeah. walk up. So there was just a lot about today that I was like, this is a setup or it's a prank or like, like, yeah. I mean, it could have made for a really good prank actually. Okay, so we are shooting. We're learning how to shoot a gun today. Have you done it before? I haven't. I don't think I've even seen a gun in real life, except like maybe a police officer. I'm not even sure. But I've definitely never heard a gun being shot, so no, I have not, I have not shot a gun. Yeah. But I'm very keen. I've I been wanting to do this. I haven't either, so you and I are on the same boat here. We are like newbies to this, I have no literally no history. Although I'm very confident I'll be good, because like with sports, I usually take very quickly to them. Okay. So I haven't done it, but I'm kind of confident I can do well. Is this something you're really like worried about? Because when we were planning this, I was like, oh yeah, that sounds cool. Then once we had it finalized, I kind of started freaking out. I was like, okay, holding a gun. I was like, what is my stances on guns? Like, how do I feel? <laughs> Are we allowed to do this? Will I be canceled for like being pro-gun? Um, I don't know. I feel nervous only, okay. but I also feel really excited. Um, but also just because I'm scared of the recoil. I've always heard that like when you shoot, it's like dislocated shoulder or... So yeah. that's what I'm mostly nervous about. But I think... I've seen people do it that I know, mm -hmm. so if they can do it, like, I feel like I can do it. You're helping me relax a little bit, because I am a little nervous about this, but you know what, let's get started. As long as we don't have to shoot anyone, like, it should be good. Yeah, I think we'll be okay with that. <laughs> as long as that's not what this is. Yeah, no, we're not going, good. because of, we're apparently shooting with real bullets, so. Yes, I'm, that, but I mean, I wouldn't want it any other way, because I mean, if you're shooting with like a BB gun, that would be like paintball type of thing. I didn't think it would be like actual bullets. I thought there would be like, yes, there's a BB gun and then there's an actual bullet. I thought there would be like a, a starter pack, between. like a, you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like okay. But apparently not. Okay. You ready though? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go. Have you guys ever held or have never held a gun before? No. Never held a gun before. No. Never. Shot one? No. I'm assuming well, if you've never yeah. held one. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Connect the dots. Okay. So the trick to doing that is you're going to take your right hand, yeah. you're going to open it up like this, and you're just going to slide it directly under. Okay. And as you do that, you're going to put your index finger over the trigger and three fingers around. I'm going to flip it over. Your thumb will be here for the purpose of switching this on and off. 
So we, we want it on. This is on, yes. So wait, up is on or is down? Down is, down is off. But up we is, want it on. We want it on. Okay. Um, the only time you'll put it off is when I ask you, are you ready to shoot? All right. Oh. Then you will put it down and you'll be, then you'll proceed to put your finger on the trigger. So. <laughs> Are you surviving? Oh babe? my god, I didn't think this was going to be stressful. Okay. No, trust me, it's not, it's not. It's, you guys will do, you guys will do. Like, I've fine. wanted to shoot for a long time, but now it's like intimidating. Oh, right. your the adrenaline will kick in. <laughs> yeah. So, the only time you'll also put your finger on the trigger is once you hear the buzzer, okay? So, all the time, finger off the trigger, okay? And you will always have to keep the gun facing forward. Uh, don't be like, oh, guys, look, I just shot. You know, that's a, that's a very dangerous thing, okay? Um, okay, so, like I said, like I said, your thumb will be here for this purpose. Okay. And your left hand will go like this. And you're just going to cup it around and it'll be like this. Okay. Okay. Don't you want to shoot first? <laughs> Don't you want to shoot? <laughs> Should we rock, paper, okay. scissors? Uh, so rock, paper, scissors to see who starts. You ready? Okay. <laughs> One. Oh my god! Ah! <laughs> my goodness, I got starting. <laughs> So how are you feeling after shooting some, you know, guns and stuff? I feel, I feel more on edge than I was before, but in a good way. Like now I want to go jump off something. Um, I feel like I can skydive now. Okay. Like I've, I was really nervous of heights. I was really nervous of shooting, did it. And I can see why people do adrenaline junky things yeah. all the time. That's all I want to do now. <laughs> Have you skydived before? I haven't. My mom bought me a voucher for my 30th birthday uh -huh. and I let it expire. So I was like, you don't know me. How am I your child? <laughs> and you clearly don't know me. But now I, I, I regret that. And I, I do want to actually do things that scare me a lot more. I, I play very safe. Safe. Um, so yeah, except in my career. But in general, I just would not do things that scare me on purpose. Mm. So now that I have and it feels like this, yeah. I'm a lot more inclined to try Yay. scary things. I like that. I also haven't skydived. I do think I would have used it though, because I feel like it's been something in the back of my mind, like, oh, I could do. Yeah, I think I think someone needs to invite me on like a TV adventure that I can't say no to. It's kind of like today, gotcha. you know, like I think I'll, I'll go skydiving, but not really like sign up myself. Okay. <laughs> well, you have been doing some incredible things in the media industry. You would be what one would consider a fresh face. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I've been doing comedy or satire side of things for like two-ish years now. But on TV, this is my first year doing a lot of things. So right now you are a TV presenter on SABC3, which is a national broadcaster. You have, you are an actress on the South African remake of Ugly Betty on SABC1, another, again, national broadcaster. You are on Showmax with Tally's Baby, and you have some digital shows as well. That's a lot. It is. And Ugly Betty show is also playing on View, which is kind of like South Africa's or Africa's answer to Netflix. Um, so it's going to be broadcast and like they, they're dubbing it into French. So I might be famous in Cameroon soon, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. That's exciting. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. With all of that and with all these things that are happening, a fresh face in the industry, I'm actually curious, how do you feel about navigating this media space? Has there been things where you're just like, I wish somebody prepared me for this? Yo, a lot. Um, I wish people would prepare me for the workload. I think sometimes when you see things on TV, it looks so nice, and it is. But I mean, for the Ugly Betty show, we shoot like sometimes 12 to 14 hours a day, six days a week. And six days a week? Yeah. So you guys don't get breaks in between? We don't. I mean, this is the first Saturday that I'm gonna have off in a very long time. Um, so I'm, <laughs> I'm enjoying it very much. Um, and then trending also is Monday to Wednesday because we shoot all five shows 
um, in the first three days of the week. So there's never really downtime. I, I, I learned for the first time that there is such a thing as being too busy to date. Like I'm trying to navigate this world and I'm like, I actually, can you go on a date this day? No, I can't. Oh my God, no, I can't. It just seems like I'm disinterested, but there's just no time. Yeah. Um, so I wish people prepared us for how much work there actually is. Yeah. And the fact that you really need to be passionate about it to do it. It's not, it's not going to be easy if it's just about the end goal, which is, I mean, for some people it could be fame or money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being also like a new face, people always excuse, or, sorry, um, being a new face, people always say, you know, oh, overnight sensation or whatever it is. And I really hate that term because I went to varsity uh, sort of 10 years ago yeah. to study theater, to study drama. Um, I did short courses in musical theater. I did a short course in advertising just to be safe. I did a TV writing course in Colombia. So I've also got everything to back it up and I've been working towards this for 10 years. And only now is thing, are things starting to pop off. So I think it's a bit like insulting to be like, oh, overnight sensation when it's been like 10 years in the making. But I mean, finally, <laughs> finally. Yes, I do agree. I think people, especially those who are not in media, have this perception of the overnight success that it's just, oh, you know, videos went viral. Okay, here you are. But not only is coming into the space hard, staying in and navigating it is, is very challenging as well. So you said being too busy and having to navigate that. I don't know how you're able to do six days a week. The show that I'm on, we shoot three times and I was like, also four long days and that was already tiring. So I, I mean, before this, I never drank coffee and now I think I drink about three cups a day. So that's how, <laughs> but again, sometimes when you see the finished products, like the first time we saw the promo, it was like, oh, damn, that's me on TV. Um, so I think those type of things help navigate the exhaustion of it all. Um, and the fact that, I mean, I go home, I sleep, I wake up, I go to work. I go yeah. home, I sleep, I wake up, I go to work. So it's yeah. very little time anymore for socializing and being the social butterfly that I am, I get into like moody moments where I'm just like, oh my gosh, I just want to see people and not the ones that I work with <laughs> as much as I like them. Um, but I think also sometimes the industry can be a bit dark. Uh, things can happen that just like will shock you sometimes and you just have to like, I mean, I see a lot of the times people call out celebrities for being silent on issues or, you know, why didn't you say something about this? And I learned very quickly that it's not really always because people don't want to say something. Sometimes you have people above you that are just like, you cannot say something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, some, some of the things that I think I struggle with being very vocal and having come into this industry because of how vocal I am. And then, yeah, so um, <laughs> that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> you do, you yeah. do. Be there is a media training side to it. Yeah. There's a, there's a how to navigate so that you still get a job in the future, so you make your current bosses happy and you somehow make yourself happy. Exactly, and still stay true to yourself, but yeah. also learn that it comes with a little bit of compromising or a little bit of media training. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the style aspect of things because a lot of people want to get into the media space because they see the glitz and the glamour, right? They see, oh my gosh, you're on TV, you're looking great, you have events, you're going to places. Obviously it's COVID right now, so situations are different and it's not as, like, I guess, as amped as it would be before. Yeah. But with style, with, with taking care of yourself, how do you navigate that now? Whereas maybe you didn't need to as intensely as you did before. Well, now people actually want to dress me. So it's a lot easier yeah. to navigate that side of things because before I had to like pay for everything I wore and yeah. try to find well, different people, things every day. People don't know that. Yeah. People don't know that on some sets, like it's when you start out, you sometimes have to figure out clothing. For a long time, for three years. And I was doing this show where I was shooting every single week. So none of the things I wore could be the same. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not getting paid that much yet to like, <laughs> find these clothes that look glamorous and different yeah. and so that was a lot but I mean like on trending we and and ugly Betty um but that's a character base on trending we have a stylist and um because I had an issue with a, de a designer that was quite public a lot of uh designers and stores have wanted to work with me to I'm not I don't know if to make up for his <laughs> but just to be like, hey, girl, like not the whole industry is not inclusive. Like we support all kinds of bodies and we love dressing people. And 
um, we love your vocalness yeah. um, as well. So, and staying true to yourself. And so being on trending is really cool because obviously even the clothes that we get styled, like if I like something a lot, I can be like, okay, I'll buy this. And sometimes designers will gift it. Yeah. Um, so it's really, really cool uh, that way, how I yeah. navigate them. I don't think I'm actually taking care of myself enough. Um, I was actually doing a lot of gym in the beginning of the year and I felt really positive. And, but I just like, it's either I go at four o'clock now, AM, or like nine after a 12 hour day. And sometimes I'm just like, oh no, no ma'am. Um, but I'm trying to find a way to, to be able to navigate that. Cause I do think for like more than just physical health for my mental health, gym was everything. Yeah. So I miss that a lot. I miss having time for that. Like we said, you're still a fresh face in the industry. So it's, it's still navigating and getting that balance mm -hmm. right. And so I'm sure with time. I'm also a night owl. Sometimes I just need to learn how to sleep, but my thoughts at night are just like, and then this one I'm gonna do, and then my career is going, ah. Yeah. So I wish I could learn to shut off because I think if I could sleep at nine o'clock on the dot, yeah. four o'clock gym wouldn't be that overwhelming. It's just that I sleep at like one, two, and then I have to be up at like six. What other challenges would you say you had to face in regards to communications with brands, with, uh, production companies and I think navigating that aspect of it when you're starting out or you've gotten the opportunity now in the media space the team aspect of it is not as established yet yeah. and so there's still a lot that needs to be figured out how did you navigate that well in the beginning people didn't want to touch my brand because satire is quite and my specific style is quite biting obviously it's quite when you say people do you mean managers, agents, do you mean production companies? I mean brands mostly, because okay. in the beginning I wasn't really looking for, I can't have a manager if I don't have work, like what's yeah. the point? <laughs> so uh, I was talking about like brands and, and trying to make relationships with people to be like, I want to do this full time. I don't want to work anymore. I want to do Instagram and YouTube and please will you work with me? And I'm, you know, I'm trying to make a message about South Africa and it's really going to be received well, I promise you. And people were just like, mm. It's just too much. Like the things you say about white people, it's a bit too much. Um, it's a bit too dangerous. We're not sure because then they're going to cancel our brand. And anyway, it took one brand. Um, and I think it was Take A Lot was the first one that was like, we're willing to take the risk. Let's go. And after Take A Lot, then it was just brand after brand after brand. Um, but yeah, it just I had to wait for the first person to be like, hey, we'll take a risk. If we get canceled, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but we like what we see so far. And then... The manager thing kind of came after that. Um, How did you navigate that aspect of it? I actually got called by the team that um, is now my manager. So they were like, we see you and your work. And, um, you know, I think the lady actually said, my daughter sent me your stuff. So I really love what you're doing. I really think it's, it's going to take off. I think it's an important thing, but I also think it's really, really dope. Um, she didn't say dope because she's old and white, but she said, like, it's really good. And, um, yeah, then they called me in. We had a meeting. We got along really well. We both had the same vision. I told them about how I went to school and I want to be an actress eventually. And I was actually nervous because I was stuck inside Coconut Curls for a very long time. I kept saying, like, I don't want to end up being one of those people who is one character, especially because I've done the acting um, craft and the, and the, the learning and the school. So I was like, please help me navigate out of this quickly yeah. so that I can still do Kells, but it's not the only thing I can do. Um, and it actually took way longer than I wanted it to actually get out of there because every time the phone rang, people were like, Kells. I was like, oh, but there's also Lissaha who also does this, this. And they were like, yeah. So Kells, I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so it took a long time, but with the help of um, the manager, and luckily, most of what's happened to me, honestly, so far until late last year was things happening to me, brands calling me, uh, my manager calling me. Um, and it was only last year that I decided that I also need to be strategic as much as I am lucky, because, you know, luck can run out. And that's when I decided, okay, we're gonna be an actress. And I went for these things specifically. Trending, essay, every time they interviewed me on the air, I was like, to the, present, to the producers, if you're watching this, hire me. And a week after one of my interviews where I said that they called and they were like, actually, are you free? <laughs> so I was like, ooh, manifestation. So there's a whole lot of manifesting, there's a whole lot of calling, there's a whole lot of emails, cold calls, um, and not waiting so much anymore, which I used to do. My mom knew like a producer who was like um, quite big in the industry. And she was like, go speak to him and ask him how to navigate this thing. 
and I did and then he was kind of like you know what it's really really tough for like a plus size lady to navigate this industry in the front of the scenes you're going to be competing with like the bonangs and the minis and you're just never going to make it so I think you should do a short course in something that will take you behind the scenes and rather go there and that was it was one meeting but that's all it took for me I was just like okay and yeah then I was like okay he's the big producer like he's the one who makes a lot of decisions if he's saying that I'm not going to make it then then I'm not going to make it and I went to go um, apply for jobs in production and TV writing and I worked behind the scenes for I think it was like three uh, three-ish years something like that um, but whilst that happened I was started doing coconut curls on the side to like free my mind from the depression or the whatever was happening whilst working and watching other people live my dream right in front of me. <laughs> um, before you leave, there was one thing I wanted to touch on. Now, I get a chance to interview some pretty amazing people within the creative space, but I've also noticed there's some pretty amazing people who watch our content. Amazing creatives, people within the music space, influencer space, fashion space, digital entrepreneurship. I mean, some of you guys watching this channel are just doing incredible things. So I also want to be featuring up and coming creatives. And you can either nominate yourself or nominate somebody who's just doing incredible things right now. There's a link in the description bar that you can click on. Thank you so much for watching. Again, don't forget, you can watch the remainder of this interview on all podcast platforms. And until next time, bye. Lesejo, thank you so much for spending some time with me today from the gun range to this awesome conversation. I had a bucket list item today. I had a deep conversation. I had some laughs. It's been a, it's been a really great day. Awesome. Well, all the best. I know we're going to see even more great things from you. And you, Miss Honey, Miss Honey channel. <laughs> just, just, just. Um, but yeah, thanks for being here. Cool. Thank you very much for having me.